When it comes to these camping rigs, weight is the biggest, the biggest thing and this I'm definitely going to be taking off because I am not carrying 9 kilograms of gas for even a two week overlanding adventure, 3 kilogram gas is going to last me, not a problem. My name is Philip Sylvester. Join me as we share our overlanding adventures through Southern Africa with you. This Earthwalker Venture episode is made possible by my Patreons. Right, welcome back to another episode of this series, which we are calling our Budget Build. Yes, before you all jump onto all of those comments and tell me, oh, but you're really spending a lot of money, <laughs> calm down. Let me talk to you about the thoughts that have been going around and all my calculation. A couple of weeks ago I spoke to you guys about what we have, which is the trailer over there with our basic camping. I've already introduced the new fridge that we did buy, the new Snowmaster, and I must admit so far we're very happy with that one. Um, but I have been over the last few weeks doing a lot of calculations. As I mentioned, we would like to get a rooftop tent, we would like to get a dual battery system and all of that type of thing. And when I did the calculations on that trailer, I can mount a rooftop tent on that roof, yes, but my concern is still there, will that trailer be okay to carry that type of weight? Um, as I mentioned, that suspension is basic suspension. So that has been a concern of mine for very long, for a while, for over these last few weeks. And then I started doing calculations of what is my investment. I'm going to have to be buy a dual battery system, I'm going to have to buy the tent, then I'm going to have to strengthen the trailer, I'm going to have to put struts in the back so that it doesn't tilt and put a new jack, jo jockey in the front to help me manage that weight. So there's a lot of modification that that trailer needs for me to get it to that point where we can do our off-roading adventures and within those calculations I realized that by the time we get to that stage we've added so much weight so many accessories onto that small trailer that it may not be strong enough to even carry it so this Conqueror trailer behind me did pop up as a very good second-hand buy uh, it went for a very good price and I did the calculation buying this trailer would in the long run work out cheaper for me because this trailer came with a dual battery system it already has a rooftop tent it has compartments for you to put extras in it's got an inline braking system to handle that weight it's got shocks it's got as I say it's got the off-road capabilities to be able to handle the adventures that we want to do so in this episode I'm quickly going to take you through the Conqueror trail I'm going to open it up for you and then I'm going to pitch it as well so we can actually see what it all looks like I haven't pitched the tent yet so that is one of the things that we're going to be doing today but for now I'm going to take you through the trailer and I can actually show you what the setup and what it all includes, what it actually, what the benefits are. And I'm sure you're going to agree with me that this was actually a very good option. Let's, let's go. Alright, so in the back over here we have got the kitchen. This. at all of that workspace I mean 
what more do you need we've got space on the back of the back over here to do any preparations we've got the side over here where we can put a stove we can do some cooking over there we've got this side so it really I mean that took me what 20 seconds to open up and in those 20 seconds I created a big working space for myself it's got it came with this fridge uh, it's a relatively old fridge this minus 40 um, generally these old fridges they like they just work and work and work so very good anything is yeah so this is how far it actually opens when it's so there we go and as I say it's got major insulation and that type of thing but you saw in my previous episode that we have bought ourselves a snowmaster fridge dual compartment fridge so this one we we won't be using this fridge in the package this is all of the battery switches my DB board is here in the back switching between AC and DC power uh, it's got the CTEC um, charger which if I plug it into the uh, AC power it automatically powers on and and switches everything over into AC power got a light in over there so just if you are camping you do have a light over here jerry cans included so I've got two already two spaces for jerry cans those are the sides for the tents but you can have a look inside there there's quite a bit of space so I can slide my ammo boxes in there I can put my camping chairs in there and any extras that you need for camping that's so much extra space inside over there there's another uh, jerry can second one then on top of the nose cone they have put on this frame so you can tie your wood or any loose things to the front of the nose cone it's got a water tank which you can fill up over here i'm not too sure how many liters it takes but i'm still in to investigate that it's got two compartments to fill up the two tanks uh, i still have to investigate all of that then inside the nose cone we have got the dual battery system um, as I still have to work through the wiring check how all of that works comes with an inverter so an inverter has also been included although I don't know if we're going to be using the inverter because these days everything can actually come out as 12 volts so unless you need to charge something there is an inverter there I'm still deciding might take it out might leave it there I don't. Nine kilogram gas is definitely an overkill. Way too much weight. Even traveling to Namibia or Botswana, they can do gas refills along the way. And if you do run out of gas, you just go and you fill it up. No problem. Nine kilograms of gas, overkill completely. So here is another jerry can holder. I might eventually move this when I take the nine kilograms away. I'll move that to the front over there. It's got a shower cubicle. Over here, so this whole arm folds out to the front and it makes a shower cubicle over there. So that's benefit, definitely. If you are out in the bush, it already has the shower cubicle. Another gas bottle, I don't know, they really used a lot of gas. Another gas bottle over here, and then the tent on top of the roof. That was our walk around of the Conqueror Safari trailer. It was now time to pitch the tent. The tent that came with the trailer is a Howling Moon canvas tent. It took us about 40 minutes to figure out where everything goes. Alright, so we've just finished pitching the tent for the first time. Um, no, it actually went quite alright. Everything looks like it's intact, everything looks like it's in order, so all in all we are very happy with that um, pitching of the tent. And we're going to get the sides on, check the sides, but otherwise everything looks in order, everything looks good. The tent still looks in a very good condition. Follow us over the next few weeks as we get this trailer ready for its first Kruger adventure. In the next episode we head up to Intakeni Bush and River Lodge. This is one of Africa's hidden gems.
If you enjoyed watching this episode, like and subscribe, hit that notification bell to receive notifications when we do upload more videos. This episode was made possible by my Patreons.